Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, we will talk about the origin of jaws. The first jawed fish appeared during the early Silurian and may date back to the late Ordovician. Early jawed fish became numerous during the Devonian, where they lived alongside jawless fish. But by the end of the Devonian, most fish in the oceans were jawed. In primitive jawed fish, such as sharks, the upper jaw is composed of cartilage called the platoquadrate, while the lower jaw is composed of a structure called Meckel's cartilage. A hyomandibular and serratohyal are a second pair of cartilage supports for the jaw joint. These cartilaginous structures fit against the neurocranium, a cartilaginous brain case structure. Now, early paleontologists viewed the origin of jaws as developing out of modified gill arches. The theory held that the first gill arches developed into the floor of the brain case and that the second gill arch formed into the plateau quadrate of the upper jaw and the lower jaw, called Meckel's cartilage, forming the mandible or the lower jaw. Then the third gilt arch formed the hyomandibular and the serratohyal in the lower jaw and throat. Now, innervation from cranial nerves support this hypothesis, as well as some early embryological studies. Now, the classic theory is found in many textbooks, but evidence from the fossil record is lacking. Recently, using developmental genetics, scientists have noticed that the embryological tissues, the neurocrest cells that form the jaws in early jawed fish, are also found in the lips surrounding lamprey mouths. Now, a newer idea was suggested that these embryological cells turn on key genes in the jawed vertebrates so that jaw features would develop only in the lower half of the mouth to form the jaw, and that the origin of the jaw was a result of the isolation of these embryological cells and gene expression in only the lower portion of the mouth, hence forming a lower jaw. Rather than the circular mouths of jawless fish, like lampreys, in which the gene expression was everywhere around the mouth. Now, this newer hypothesis views the origin of jaws as an independent origin rather than developing from gill arches. This theory is called heterotopy theory, meaning different place in Greek. Now, there's a third theory which suggests that the origin of jaws was more to do with breathing and respiration than for biting and eating. Having a lower jaw allowed improved intake of oxygenated water and that the jaw only later developed the ability for strong bites and in feeding. This is called the ventilation theory, which could invoke the other two theories as well. Nevertheless, the origin of jaws was a big deal as it led to the evolution of all other vertebrates. This large monophyletic group is called the Nathiostomata, which represents all living vertebrates except the primitive jawless fish, like hagfish, lampreys, as well as the early Paleozoic agnatha jawless fish that we reviewed previously. Okay, be sure to show how jaws are thought to have initially arisen in vertebrates, and be sure to illustrate the major anatomical features of early nathostomes. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Utah State University Geology Program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Links are found in the description below.